so beautiful and so delicious. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but I am going to eat you. Yes, I'm going to eat all of you. I feel like such an ogre in my garden of ooze sometimes, my little babies here. <laughs> They have no idea. Eventually, they're going to end up eating. But um, hey, that's life, you know. I am I am the top predator in this room. By the way, speaking of this room, good morning and welcome back to the Garden of Ooh. My name is Ray. I am the host. As I swing my arms wide, I am the host of this green, never-ending, green-growing mess that I lovingly call the Garden of Ooh. I promised you, and I always keep my promises. I promised you last time that you were here. And by the way, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate it. I promised you last time I was going to show you my indoor garden. Remember, uh, we all agreed on what I was going to grow this year inside during the winter when it's all snowy and cold outside, but I'm nice and warm and snug and there's a fungus net. I don't mind the fungus nets. They just need to stay out of my face while I'm trying to talk to my friends. But I told you I was going to grow some stuff and I did grow some stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you in. Come on over here and I'm going to show you what I'm growing here and we'll talk about it just a little bit. Okay. We have things from itty bitty to not so itty bitty. Look at that. Yeah, we'll get back to that. But I want to give you a quick scan. Colorful, varied. Ah, oh, we're not done yet. Let's just keep on going. Pointy. Green, vining, and odd. Yes, we have it all here in the Voodoo Garden. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing you over to the left, and we're going to go from left to right because, you know, that's just how the world works. We're going to start with a couple new things that uh, actually one of you gave me the idea for. So I want to thank you. There was somebody who posted a comment. Now, of course, you know, I never remember names, but they gave me a name of a pepper, and it's called Ajvarsky. Edgvarsky. It's a Serbian, I believe, or uh, somewhere around that area of the world. It's a, a large red pepper. You remember a few years ago, I grew yellow monster and I also grew uh, a Serbian pepper that was large and red. A friend had sent me seeds from Serbia. Well, this is either it or a close relative of it. It doesn't look like much. It's just a little seedling because it just sprouted after uh, we filmed last, uh, the last program. This one I'm going to grow outside. This is my choice for growing outside. It's a large, sweet grilling pepper, and it has not a twin, but a friend over here. This is called Yellow Monster. I grew this a few years ago, and everybody loved it. I didn't save seeds from it. You know what? These two I'm going to grow this year and see if I can save enough seeds. And if you're impressed with this, and I'm impressed with this, and it grows well, and it shows well, and you want to grow this yourself, Possibly I'll be able to save seeds from this and you can grow it yourself. So I'm not going to explain too awful much about them other than they're large peppers that really show well in your garden and they have a good flavor. They got good strong plants. I was very happy with them last time I grew them. This time I'm going to grow them again and we're going to go through the whole process from start to finish. Now, these may or may not go into the garden outside. I'm starting, <laughs> I'm starting them in December. Yeah, so maybe I did a little bit, uh, I jumped the gun a little bit, so maybe I'll start other seeds later on, like in the end of January. We'll find out as we go. So keep an eye on these and we'll see how they develop in the vo uh, Voodoo Garden. Now this is not, definitely not, a pepper plant. This is spinach. Yep, it's the spinach that we have on Little Shop of Seeds. And I told you I was going to start plants. Now these are just starting, so of course they're not showing too awful much. But indoor spinach, yep. It just sprouted not too long ago. I think it was uh, the last time we, uh, we were together. It was just sprouting. So we got spinach growing in the Voodoo Garden. Now remember the lighting in here is artificial lighting and it's as bright as I can get it, but it's not outdoor lighting. So don't expect miracles in the Voodoo Garden. All things are possible, but then again, maybe they're not going to be as good as outside. One case in point is the Sun Glow corn. This is the new corn that's on Little Shop of Seeds, and I stole one of the seeds from Little Shop of Seeds and planted it in here. This is supposed to be a shorter uh, uh, version of sweet corn that you can grow in a confined space, you know, a smaller garden, or in a pot. This is great for potted corn because it only gets around four feet tall. Yeah, so I don't know how tall it's going to get here in the Voodoo Garden from the potting soil the top of the potting soil to the top of the plant, it's already about two and a half feet tall. And it's got a sucker. These are called suckers that grow on the side of it. You'll see these when they're growing outside. Some people say to tear them off because they sap life from the plant. I don't think that they do. 
My point of view is that all leaves are producing energy for the mother plant. So I don't believe it's sapping any kind of strength. I have good potting soil. I feed it with compost tea. I'm giving it the brightest light I possibly can. And if you can get corn to grow and not fall over indoors, I think you're doing something right. Now we're going to keep an eye on this and see if it puts out tassels and if it pr uh, produces corn. Somebody mentioned, you're probably just going to get little itty bitty baby corns. And you know what? I don't care. I'll just get me an itty bitty stick of butter <laughs> and we'll have a picnic in here in the vo uh, voodoo garden. We're going to swing in. This is colorful. I actually took a picture of this and it's on the little shop of seeds for the gourmet mix lettuce. Yeah, this is the gourmet mix. I took a pinch of seeds and planted them in here. Of course, with all the different seeds in the gourmet mix, I couldn't tell what was which. I just sprinkled them in there. We have, it looks like a butterhead right here and some kind of ruffled reddish one right here. Another kind in here. And this one right here has a fiddle leaf to it. Look at that. All different textures and sizes and varieties are growing in this. This is a mix that you can grow outdoors. And of course it's going to get bigger. And outdoors it's going to get lush and big and plump. And you'll be able to just, and by the way, when you grow these, you don't have to let them head off because some of them are not head type lettuce. All you have to do is pinch off a leaf and my stomach's growling, actually. There you go. Yes, I'm going to chew right, oh. Yep, I'm going to chew it right on camera. That is soft, soft as silk. Absolutely beautiful. You know, I've never eaten lettuce like this. This color lettuce, I don't know what this is. So maybe if you can identify it. But look, all different fun stuff that you can grow yourself indoors. Yes, indoors or outdoors. I'm just doing this indoors just for fun during the winter so I can keep my sanity. Mm. Wow, fresh lettuce and it's freezing cold outside. Everything's frozen outside. I'm eating fresh lettuce. Now this is a snow pea. Uh, now all of these plants, by the way, are from Little Shop of Seeds. This is a sugar snow pea and you know how they grow. They put out the, uh, the initial leaves and then they start putting out these little runner vines. Yep, and they vine up and they grab everything. This is a spring treat or an autumn plant, but look at this. It just started growing. It, it grows very, very fast, by the way. It starts out slow. But then what happens is after it puts out the initial plant, it starts sending out other plants from the base of it. Yeah. So this is actually, I think about three or four new plants, but they're all one plant, but they branch off and then it's going to start growing and grabbing things. I got to keep this away from other things so that it can grow up and vine. But hopefully we'll be enjoying snow peas in the middle of winter when it's snowing. <laughs> How appropriate is that? And this back here, this one's getting big and it's getting big fast. This is called bok choy. Yep, this is the bok choy that I have on the little shop of seeds. I think it's called Michi Holi or uh, Miggy. Uh, I have no idea how to pronounce it. <laughs> Look at the ribs on this. Beautiful white ribs on the bok choy. Nice green leaves. And this is a baby plant. Now, bok choy, you always imagine growing straight up. Yeah, I could get this to grow straight up if I trust it up and stuff, but I don't want it to do that. I've been keeping it right up by the light and letting the leaves spread out. And as I grow these, like the lettuce and the bok choy, I'm going to be cutting off the outer leaves and allowing the inside leaves to grow up and fall over. Greens for the winter. Not bad. And speaking of color, this is something that was new in the little shop of seeds and I'm growing it myself. Look at the stems. It looks like rhubarb, doesn't it? Yep. This is called rainbow shard. There's a red one, a yellow, another yellow, and I don't know what this other one is over here, but it's definitely not a red. It's kind of a uh, slightly pinkish white color. These are babies and they, uh, this is the morning by the way, so they haven't opened up their leaves all the way, but they're starting to. Yep. Swiss shard. I love that. Green things growing in the Garden of Vu. All kinds of good edibles. See, anybody can do this. If you have a sunny window, you can grow these as well by a sunny window. I'm kind of at a disadvantage because I don't have a window here in the, in the Voodoo Garden. But if you have a sunny window, especially a southern window, anybody can do this. It's not something special that I'm doing. The broken leaves. 
and the not so perfect leaves end up in my mouth. The better looking leaves I'm showing off to you, but I eat all the little stuff that falls off of the plant. <laughs> I'm quite the rabbit. Yes, I am. Bok choy. That's really good. You know what? I tried the Lucullus. I think that's how it's pronounced. Remember that, that uh, Swiss chard I grew out in the garden? If, if you tune into the Praxis channel, you've seen that. That was a Swiss chard. <laughs> it looked like something from the dinosaur days. It was huge. It was like three or four feet tall. It was big around. The stalk was incredible. I, I can't even uh, explain it. You just have to go back to the programs to see it. I grew that outside and I, I had no idea that Swiss chard would ever do that. And that was, a, that was a, a one heck of a, a bonus for me. Now, it tasted delicious, though. And this is milder. This is milder. I love Swiss chard. I really do. And I like the strong uh, Swiss chard flavor. This is a milder Swiss chard. So I guess folks who like the milder flavor are going to like the rainbow stuff. Now, the peas, that's going to be fun. But what I'm going to be doing with this lettuce is, it's so crowded in there. I planted, I think, like maybe 12 uh, seeds in there. And uh, so it's going to get really, really bumper crop crowded. So I'm going to be picking off leaves all over the place and eating leaves as it grows. But uh, this is a, just a few things, just a few things that anybody can grow indoors. I mean, we've, we've done peppers, we've done tomatoes, we've done all different kinds of indoor stuff. I even have sweet potatoes. Yeah, I'm not going to get potatoes in that pot because it's too small. I'm growing the sweet potato for the vine. I'm going to keep the vine alive all winter long. Then in the spring, I mentioned this before, and in the spring I'm going to take cuttings, root them in water because they root almost overnight in water. I'm going to get some cuttings, root them in water, and then take them outside and grow sweet potatoes because this last year I grew that. I've been growing the sweet potato for like two years now, and I do the same thing every year. Take cuttings, keep it growing in the winter. Well, I think I showed on the, the uh, Praxis 5572 channel the harvest from the sweet potatoes. They were these huge leviathan things, and I, I, I picked them. I didn't uh, cure them or anything. And people kept telling me, you got to cure them, you got to cure them. They get sweeter. But the thing is, they were sweet enough as it was, so I didn't have to cure them. I just peeled them, baked them, mashed them, put them in the Ziploc baggies, threw them in the freezer, and I've been making a sweet potato pie for uh, the holidays and kind of in between the holidays. I really shouldn't be eating so much sweet potato pie because I'm going to gain a few pounds, but that's okay. This is the holiday season. It's okay. Oh, 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 um, last thing. Uh, excuse me. I'm kind of excited today. The last thing is right behind you. Remember I told you I was going to show you that? I'm going to show you the last garden plant that we have here in the Voodoo Garden. And so you're going to have to just swing your head around and I think you're going to like what you see. This green machine. This green machine. I got to kneel down for this. Down at the bottom. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way up at the top. It's well worth the wait. Little pieces of a tomato. Yep, it's a tomato plant and it smells. Smell this. Oh, that smells good. That is a smell of summer. Yes, it is. This is one plant. This is the Praxis cherry. This one that has been growing for ages uh, in my gardens, and I've been saving the seeds, growing it, saving the seeds. This is a tomato plant that uh, rivals any other tomato plant for strength, stability, production, and flavor. Look at the strong leaves on this and the dark green. You don't get this kind of green for very many tomato plants. And the smell, of course, as it grows, it grows fast. It suckers a lot. And uh, for those of you who don't know what suckers are, they're just new plants that come out of the sides where the leaf meets the stem. Some gardeners remove them. I encourage them, see? But as it grows, and I mentioned this before, I'm going to back up. I mentioned that I'm going to grow this indoors to the ceiling of the voodoo garden. So what I did was I planted one little plant down there. I planted a seed and it forked. So I planted it deeper. That's why it looks like two plants down there. That's actually one plant. And then one of them went to the right, one went to the left. I put bamboo poles in there. The bamboo poles are about five and a half to six feet tall. And as it grows, I'm tying it to the poles because tomato plants generally are not self-supporting. Once they get taller than you, that would be a miracle. Uh, it's growing up and I'm just using cotton string to tie it loosely, not tightly, to this bamboo pole. And then after it gets about two feet tall, I'm allowing it to start forking just a little bit, put out new suckers. Then as those suckers grow, like this one here, later today, I'm going to take some cotton string and just tie it gently there to keep it going up towards the top. Otherwise, 
it'll go towards the right or left and then we'll get some instability. Now this plant has a left and it has a right. So it has two growing fronts and it's kind of a Zen thing for me. I come in here during the day in the morning, see, it wants to put out cherry tomatoes, but I can't let it. So I pinch these off and throw them on the soil, let the soil digest them. And that encourages it to grow a little bit faster and a little bit stronger. And then once it gets up towards the light and it gets a stronger light, it's going to get even stronger. The plant's going to get stronger as it gets closer to the light. That's when I'm going to allow it to start producing fruit. And so it's going to be like a couple, like dual trees here growing tomatoes. And then after it gets to the top, it'll just kind of vine down. And uh, I think it's going to have a nice effect. Not a bad little plant. Grown from a seed indoors, never seen the light of day. Not bad. Eventually we're going to have cherry tomatoes. So we're going to have quite the salad going on here in the Voodoo Garden. In a classic Y formation, we zoom down and the flowers. Oh, pepper flowers. Yep, it's a pepper plant and it is loaded with flowers. This is the plant I've been shaping and pollinating. And look what we have here. Little peppers coming out. Yep. I've been pollinating these with my finger. Yep, my little bee. I call it the finger bee. Whenever flowers come out, I just stick my finger in there, tickle it a little bit, and go to the next one, tickle it with the same finger, and I simulate a bee going flower to flower. That's how we do it. Some people use a, a toothbrush or a, a, a vibrating toothbrush or a, a Q-tip or something. I just use my finger. I'm very, very low tech. And around this plant, there's a whole host of flowers and they're now starting to produce peppers. Yes, they are. This is the sweet habanero, also known as habanera. I grew it this last year. This is the one that's uh, on the little shop of seeds. It's a sweet habanero, all the rich flavor of a habanero with zero heat. I actually ate these on camera to demonstrate that they were they're mild. And uh, I could have accidentally <laughs> grown a hot one, I don't know. But no, I was lucky and it was mild. What I did was I, I allowed it to grow one stem straight up. And then I pruned it right here. And we, and we had three branches grow out. I've been doing this, taking off of the, all the growth, just snapping it off and allowing it to go out into thirds. This is giving me three strong branches and now I'm allowing it to flower. I didn't allow it to flower earlier because I wanted the strength to go into growth. Remember I mentioned that with the tomato. Same thing with pepper plants. Indoors, underneath the light, just pollinate the flowers. At first, the flowers will fall off because it's not quite strong enough. And then as the plant gets stronger, it'll start keeping the flowers and eventually the flowers will produce fruit. And there we go. So this is going to be the topping for our salad. Not so bad. I am having the best time. You have no idea. The winter is going to be long. It's going to be cold. But in here, reality, <laughs> well, the reality outside doesn't exist. It is warm. It smells good. It tastes good. This is the, vo uh, the voodoo garden. And this is what helps me keep my sanity. All of these selections, by the way, yes, I am promoting my website, but that's what I do. Uh, all of these are available there. And there, by, the, by the way, by no means is this uh, all that you can grow. Just about everything there, cabbages, kales, uh, beans. Beans are perfect for growing indoors. You can do that as well. All different kinds of things that you can grow indoors if you just think outside the box and try not to let folks tell you what you can't do. Instead, I think it would be nice if people would encourage you to try things that you can do, possibly can do. You never know. You never know unless you try it. I'm trying it and I'm doing it. Luckily, I'm going to cross my fingers. Hopefully these plants will get big and beautiful and then I'll murder them. Yes. <laughs> because that's what happens in the voodoo garden. <laughs> Don't enjoy your time here too long. Eventually you end up on a salad plate. Well, that's it for today's program. I really do appreciate you dropping by. If you have any questions about your indoor gardening or if you have any questions at all about anything, please feel free to post it in the comment section below. I hope you're going to continue joining me for this ongoing journey of my salad bar in a container. Oh, rascal's at the door. I got to get going. Thank you for joining me once again. Have a great day, everybody. I'm out of here. That's lettuce. 
<laughs> you don't like salad. <laughs> That's good stuff, baby. Huh? Yeah. My little guardian of the of the garden, huh? Yeah. You want to get going, don't you? Your breath smells like cabbage. Oh, that's not good. Now my nose smells like cabbage.